I've built wagons for a number of years, probably 15 or 20 years, and I came across a couple of wagons. A guy wanted a horse trade on, and I said, I love the horse trade. So I traded for a couple of sheep wagons, and slowly over the next couple of years built them. Wanted to share that with the public, and came up with the idea of renting them out as a bed and breakfast, and then the, it evolved from there. My wife and I, uh, I came to Canada from Montana. She's worked at Cypress Hills Park for 30 some years now are in the parks business. So we've been on the property for 16 years. This build was started about a year and eight months ago. Ghost Town Blues uh, was one that kind of evolved. Uh, these buildings all came from ghost towns. And when I got them, they had the blues. They had the ghost town blues. We've got no hauntings. I could, I'd love to have one so, so we could market that, but no hauntings. <laughs> Okay, this is the Govanlock cabin. Govanlock was another ghost town south of the hills. Uh, not a lot is known about this cabin. It was uh, believed to be a school marm lived in it somewhere up northeast of town. It was brought into town, too small to put garage doors in, and so it stayed intact. But in the flood of 2010, the house was condemned that this was on, and this building was condemned. So. We moved it out and restored it, and a, a lady named Laura from Calgary was gracious to, enough to give it to me and uh, has just taken a real interest in the place, and, and we thank her for that. And I get a lot of people that uh, say, well, what do you mean I'm staying in a wagon? And, geez, what do you mean there's not a bathroom in that wagon? And, and that, and 100% of everybody that's ever stepped in one, you can just see the, the body language. They get it, and they go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'd gladly stay here. This is great. This is the uh, Thresherman's cook wagon. Yes. And this, this is an actual cook car that girls cooked out of in the, wow. around the turn of the century. They cooked five meals a day for the thrashing crews. At the turn of the century, when the wheat industry was booming in Canada, they, the big thrashing crews went farm to farm and there were three girls cooked five meals a day out of one of these for the crew. And uh, this particular wagon, on some sunny day, a couple of girls signed their names on the bottom of the bolster on this wagon and I've left it there. I got this wagon running gear from a guy named Jonas Abramson. It's a new build and it's the only new build I've done. Usually I do restorations, but because I wanted it to fit and put a porch on it and the ceilings in them were very small and I needed a taller ceiling to, to put guests in. But this is a Thrasherman's Cook Car Wagon. I've named it the Rob Sart for a lady that was from Rob Sart came by and just asked me, the next one you do, name it Rob Sart. And Rob Sart's a ghost town south of here, and I've named all these cabins after ghost towns. Well, this is it. I'll get the air conditioner going and get. Oh, this is really cute. Isn't get this you. cute? Buzz. Like, like on the website. <laughs> Well, most of the people come a little wound up and leave uh, way relaxed. They, uh, they enjoy the campfires and they enjoy just being around the wagons. And I think they get a sense of, of what the people that settled this country went through by staying in the, in the wagons and in the cabins because that's what they're genuine, they're authentic, the real deal. And, and I think people sense that. I know I get a lot of stories. That, uh, come out about oh my grandfather or, or whatever their relatives that have, they've heard stories and and that's part of it and just to get away and, and the peace and quiet we don't have a television here we've got wireless internet but we our intent is to get back with your kids sit around the fire and enjoy enjoy each other okay this is the Vidora wagon Vidora was another ghost town south of the Cypress Hills uh, not a lot of history is known about this wagon. They believe it came out of North Dakota and uh, was built in the 1920s. When I got it, it was pretty rough shape. It was the first sheep wagon I did. And my philosophy on building wagons is uh, if you build enough of them, you run out of the way to do them wrong. This is the lodge at Ghost Town Blues. It was formerly a Lutheran church from Hatton, Saskatchewan, uh, built in 1912 moved to Maple Creek in 1949 when Hatton was no longer. So this was the Lutheran Church in Maple Creek until 1970 and from 1970 till when I got it, it was a storage shed. Uh, my son and I restored it in a winter and uh, this is where we have concerts is on the stage and we have indoor concerts in the inside in the fall. 
Uh, we do a Sunday brunch out of the chuck wagon off the end of it, and uh, it's just a very cool building. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so proud and so happy to have Rami Mays here in the ghost town and uh, the master of melodic mischief, Jay Nowicki, out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Welcome these boys, uh, boys and girls here and enjoy yourself. A lot of movement. <laughs> All right. I can tell you that I love you, I can't say I think of you, but I know, yes I know, we got something going on. I've done industrial construction, Fort McMurray and, and the U.S. for the last six years. Uh, been gone fairly steady with that, and really music's just a real companion to us and in Alberta Saskatchewan at this time there's an incredible number of highly talented people and I started making concerts got to know some of these people and told them about what up my concept was and and they just oh please please let us know when you do um, Greg tracked us down because he we met him actually at a place in Medicine Hat that we were playing and I guess he liked it, which is great. And uh, so he'd been tracking us down, trying to set something up for a while. And we actually have a, a Calgary Blues Festival this summer, and we have some shows in Montana. So it, it finally timed out that we could make it out. And in this kind of weather, you really can't go wrong. <laughs> it's so beautiful today. We do all kinds of venues, so it never surprises me when we're somewhere small or large. It's when you play independently, it seems you just sort of have built your demographic person by person in your little market areas. So. This is as humbling as it gets, and it's, it's good to keep that way, so I like it. I love this intimacy, so. Bands have to go by on the number one highway here, six miles from the place to go to festivals anywhere, and I pick up a lot of bands going by, uh, collaborating with Ye Old Jar Bar and Medicine Hat and Shan McGowan and Swift Current. We're block booking and always interfacing uh, with other venues to see who's around and what we can do. Uh, where I want to go with the music is I want to do four bigger shows a year, and but I want it to be a very musician-friendly place that if you stop by here for the bed and breakfast, you don't know who might be around the campfire playing and get musicians playing here for donations. So don't go, cause I know we got something going on. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, Joanne Myrall was by here a couple of weeks ago and Ed Brown a uh, cowboy musician out of Manitoba in the Cowboys Hall of Fame. Uh, good friends, uh, Melody Hankwich, Belle Plain's been by. She'll be by on August 31st for a show and we're really looking forward to her. Uh, Maple Creek's kind of on a precipice that could probably go either way. It could fall away and die or it could, it could grow and I, I think there's enough interest that I'm seeing that it's going to grow. Uh, the Redmond House is doing some music there, Ralph and Lori do music and Cowboy Poetry's bringing some musicians in, and so lots of good things happen in there. Hi, hi. Nice to meet you. Lefka? Lefka, yes. Lefka. And who's this young lady? Hi, my name's Greg. You Helen? Yes. This is Molly, and this is Rocco. Molly? Molly will pester you. She loves to chase the ball. Okay. This is a historic log cabin. It's my latest pride and joy. Uh, I had a guy named Mike help me this spring and we t disassembled it log by log, and moved it to town and restored it. And uh, it came from the Bill Ramsey Ranch. As far as Bill knew, his great grandfather moved this off the prairies in about 1920s or 30s and lived in it for a while before they built the house. And he didn't know a lot of history of it beyond that but it's incredibly well constructed. Uh, the axemanship on the interior walls is incredible and, 
and I'm really proud to have this cabin in the, in the ghost town. We've got trails that go out four or five miles for walks. Uh, we interface with the park on, on some of their dark sky preserve stuff. Uh, we do a Sunday brunch catered by the Star Cafe and Grill. They do a wonderful job out here every Sunday and, and Eric Lawrence, Eric and Ann have been real supportive. They come by and give wagon rides to the guests on Sunday brunches. We're uh, still developing the concept. I know I, I want to build at least one more cabin here and uh, I think that's as big as I want to get. We want to keep it small and intimate and quiet and, and solitary for, for people. That's the intent of it. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on SASTEL Max Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com.